Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the area between the curves y equals x and y equals x squared. And I'm going to be showing you how to do this using one of the formulas on my new Calc 2 study guide, or integral calculus study guide. If you haven't already checked that out, there's a link down in the description where you can go download that right now and start using it today. I highly recommend checking that out. It should be a huge help to you as you work through homework, study for tests, whatever the case may be. But this problem here how to find the area between two curves is one of the formulas on that study guide. So I want to show you how to use that. So the first thing that you want to do when you have a problem like this, finding the area between two curves is to figure out where those two curves intersect with each other, because we need to figure out where the area between these two curves actually is. So, you know, you could always sketch this out to see what it looks like that. Yeah, that certainly helps uh, in a lot of cases. Sometimes, though, it's not really uh, very easy to graph whatever function you're looking at, so that may not be that helpful. But in this case, we do know what y equals x and y equals x squared look like, so we could just draw a quick sketch of those real quick. So y equals x is just going to be a linear function, a line with slope 1 going through the point 0, 0, through the origin. You know, this is our x-axis, our y-axis. And then y equals x squared is going to be a parabola which is has a vertex at the origin and then goes kind of like this. So we can kind of see just from a quick sketch that the area that we're trying to find is right here, right? This is the area that is between these two curves. So what we need to figure out is the edges of this area where they intersect with each other so that we can set up our integral to find the area between these two curves. So to figure out where two functions intersect, all you have to do is once you have these functions where it's y equals some function of x and y equals some function of x, we can set them equal to each other. So if we take x and set it equal to x squared, we can solve this equation for x to figure out where these x values are of where these functions intersect with each other. So since we have an x squared and an x term, probably the easiest way to do this would be to get all of our x x's on one side. So if we, uh, you know, subtract x from both sides, subtract x from the other side also, we're going to get 0 equals x squared minus x. And then what we can do is factor out an x. So we're going to get x times x minus 1. And now since we know that these, the product of these two terms is equivalent to zero, if either one of these terms equals zero, the whole thing will be zero. So we can take each of these pieces separately and set them to zero. And then this one's already solved for X, X equals zero is gonna be one intersection. And then if we add one to both sides, we're gonna get X equals one. So we know that these two functions, Y equals X and Y equals X squared, intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 1. So what that what we also want to figure out at this point is which function is higher than the other function over this area. So we can see from our graph that our linear function, our line, is our top function and our parabola is our bottom function. So basically y equals x is going to be above y equals x squared over this area that we actually care about. But let's say we didn't have a graph. Let's say we wanted to figure this out algebraically. All we would have to do, since we know that these two functions intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 1, we just have to take some x value within that range between 0 and 1 and plug it into both functions and figure out which one gives us a, a higher number and which one gives us a lower number. So let's say we plug in x equals 1 half because we know that x equals 1 half is between 0 and 1. If we plug that into both of these functions, if we plug it into y equals x, we're going to get y equals 1 half. And if we plug it into y equals x squared, we're going to get y equals 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. Right? So 1 half is greater than 1 fourth. So that tells us the function that gave us 1 half, which was y equals x, should be our top function, which we can confirm in our graph here and y equals x squared, which gave us y equals 1 fourth, should be our lower function, which again is confirmed by our graph. So basically we have figured out at this point that the area that we're trying to find 
exists between x equals zero and x equals one. And over that range, y equals x is our top function and y equals x squared is our bottom function. So to figure out what this area is, we can use that information to set up an integral which represents that area. So the, our integral is always just gonna be the bounds are gonna be the two places where our function intersected. So zero and one. And then the actual function that we're integrating is just gonna be our top function minus our bottom function. So our top function is x, our bottom function is x squared. So we just have to find the integral of x minus x squared over zero to one, and that would give us our area. So now we can go ahead and integrate this. So we can integrate this just using the power rule. So the integral of x is gonna be, we're gonna raise our power by one, so it's gonna be x squared, and then we divide by our new power. So x squared divided by two, and then the integral of x squared, we can again use the power rule. We're gonna raise our power by one. So it's gonna go from x squared to x cubed. And then we just divide by our new power. So x cubed divided by three. And then we're gonna evaluate that over our bounds of zero to one. So to evaluate over these bounds, we just plug in one into this function. So that's gonna give us one squared over two, which is one half minus one cubed over three, which is one third. And then we subtract out whatever we get from plugging zero into our function. So when we plug zero in for x, we're gonna get zero squared, which is zero, over two is still zero, minus zero cubed, which is zero, divided by three, which is still zero. So we're gonna get zero minus zero, which is just zero. Okay, so now we can simplify this. One half minus one third, the easiest way to combine those into one thing would be to get a like denominator. So if we multiply this one half by three over three, we multiply one third by two over two, that gives us three sixths minus two sixths, which is one sixth. So the area between y equals x and y equals x squared is just gonna be one sixth. So like I said, this method and this formula is on my Calc 2 study guide, which should make studying and homework a lot easier for you. So I highly recommend checking that out. There's a link down in the description that'll take you straight over to that. So you can download it right now and start using it today. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks and see you next time.